So today's podcast, I have Anton Schulke from Sam Rush. I'm sure many of you guys uh, know Anton. He's the guy that does everything in the background with Sam Rush webinars and everything else. So, Anton, thank you for taking the time to come on to the podcast. No, thanks, uh, thanks, Craig, for having me. Thank you. No, I think uh, we'll have an interesting conversation um, about how to get started on webinars and, and all that stuff. But we'll start off just with a bit about yourself. Um, obviously, you're working for Same Rush at present. Previously, where we met, you were doing the other podcast. Um, for What was the name of the other company that you used to do the podcast for? It wasn't wasn't podcast, it was uh, webinars. I hey, webinars, sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, called Web Promo, Ukrainian, a local Ukrainian company. And- uh, yeah. Ukrainian camp. yeah. Um, so yeah, you done that for a while, and then you went on to join Same Rush. Um, so how, yeah, how yeah. is that? Yeah, I've, I've done I've done a, well, a year or two always with Promo because they they've done a lot of webinars in, in Russian for Ukrainian market, and they actually succeed very well. That was their business model, a lead generation, basically, they use it for. Uh, and, and they thought if they can easily replicate it for Western world, that's why they employed me. But uh, it didn't really work. They didn't have a product. So, guys, if you I want to do webinar before doing any webinar series or webinar movement, whatever, webinars, before doing webinar, think about it. If you don't have a product, just 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 why would you do webinars? Yeah. So uh, after the same rush, uh, asked me uh, Fernanda in particular asked me to go to same rush and to work with uh, SM rush webinars, which I'm doing for almost three years now. Three years. It's been a quick three years actually. I think uh, I remember when you first went to same rush and. Um, and it doesn't seem that long ago, but you've done um, hun- hundreds, literally hundreds of webinars in that period of time. Um, and I think uh, you've made, taken the same rush webinars to the next level in terms of your contacts and, and everything else that you've put together. So I think it's, it's taken it definitely up to the next level. Um, do you feel that, Obviously, you know lots of people in the industry um, and you're able to get them onto the webinars and stuff like that. Do you feel that that's uh, an advantage for Sam Rush to, to, you know, is having those contacts the key part of doing webinars? Uh, it's always this. Sam Rush is a big company, big name in a niche industry. So it's, it's very easy uh, for, for me to, to call almost anyone. And as otherwise, then, then if when you work for, um, not known company and it's other way around a lot of people actually want to be on our webinars it's established platform established well many people know about that um saying so uh what i'm trying trying to push is it's so easy for expert expert like you uh craig you've done 40 50 webinars with us so easy for expert who's doing uh, his or her stuff or 10, 15, 20 years uh, to get on a webinar, especially if it's if it's a panel discussion or as a panelist, because you know this your stuff. So for you, it's what one hour of your life, uh, and uh, I will give you exposure and uh, transcript and everything. So we pleased uh, we please people a lot with that. And this is this is maybe not the major uh, part of, but this is a very big part of a webinar. So we. We're trying to build a community, and it's not only our our listeners, our watchers, but it's also our speakers, community for our speakers, so it's kind of double-tier community. And, yeah, I think SMRH gained a lot because we got not only webinars, but webinars as well. Uh, We try to build up, uh, try to convert our speakers into brand advocates. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure SMRH really gained a lot from that. Yeah, I think um, it's it, as you say, it's, it works well for both parties. Um, as you know, with me, Sam Rush have given me um, a massive platform and taken my own personal brand to the next level by just appearing on webinars and everything else. You know, they've helped me speak at conferences. They've done a lot for me. So I think for anyone looking to become a speaker, become a brand. You know, it's certainly a great uh, 
option for people to, and and quite an easy option, you know, because I think Sam Rush are always looking for fresh people, you know, new faces and stuff like that. So I think it's great. yes, it's not it's not really uh, we're not looking for fresh faces uh, only for sake of fresh faces. Well, of course, we are we are looking for great and good speakers. We're also looking for people who wants to work with us because uh, yeah, as, as you said, many people would like to do it, but we did have some some kind of things. Uh, when I said, okay, do you want to do a webinar with us? And um, someone, yeah, I don't want to put any names in. Yeah, I might do. Would, will you pay? No, we don't pay. By the way, we don't pay. Uh, and I say, okay, um, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that, but I, I don't know. And uh, I'm not really sure. And so basically, we're trying to avoid to work with people who don't see value. I think it's, yeah. it's a value for, for almost everybody, even even if you're very, very big and everything, but not everyone sees this way. And we're trying to avoid, we don't really pull and we don't really push uh, people and say, yeah, yeah, please do, please do webinar with us, because I've done it a few times and it never really worked very well. I only prefer to work with people who see the value. It's, it's a win-win situation for both of us, I think. Uh, and uh, and we work with, with these people. That's why we work with you a lot, for example. Yeah, I think, you know, the people that see value, I've seen the likes of Jason Bernard, Ross Tavendale, you know, spend a fair bit of time doing stuff with SEMrush, and it's massively valuable to them as well. So it's, you know, it's not as if I'm a one-off case where it's been valuable for me. Anyone who puts the time and effort in, sees massive value from it and gets massive exposure so um it's it's a question i'm asked often actually people say how did you get into sem rush how how did that work um and it's a uh, and it's as i say it's relatively easy if you've got knowledge and experience but obviously i always tell people the stories about you personally um about the backgrounds the lights the microphone and all of the other stuff um, that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of joke of the industry about all this light uh, and and, uh, and everything. I remember uh, Olga Andriyanka make a joke that is that if light is okay, then ton is okay. Can content doesn't matter, uh, which is which is not exactly what uh, is right. But always we try to make it perfect, especially during the test. If because if something is not perfect on a test, it's definite. It's definitely we're looking for for disaster. Uh, on a on a webinar itself, um, yeah. So no, I think um, you've got to make it perfect, and I think you definitely get high standards. And you know, I've heard you saying to me, your background shit, your lighting shit, and it you know it helps me improve the quality of the the webinars that I was on, and I think that's that's massive. So obviously, you're a big. Um, advocate of getting good lights, good backgrounds, good microphone. Yeah, but this, is, this is kind of obvious uh, because, for example, if you're watching something, you 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 or you or you're listening. So, for example, you're listening to a podcast. You use you using, for example, now some kind of special software. I've never heard about, but obviously, it's in order to. And make sure the quality of sound is good because quality, if quality is not good, if I have to really catch, try to read every single word, I, I would not listen because it's what how many podcasts on podcasts on the market? Thousands. The same with yeah. the webinar, the same with the webinar. I wouldn't watch webinar if I cannot see anything, or if I can even worse, if I cannot hear anything. So of course, yeah. quality, some some kind of standard of, of quality uh, is is massively important. Uh, well, always a question of how important to make a TV picture. Maybe it's not that important. And it's very, very difficult to achieve because uh, more, why webinars are so easy? Because uh, our speakers are doing it from their own offices or from their own home or even from sometimes from hotels. And obviously, if it would be completely if you have to deliver them to your studio. Even Semrush has offices basically on almost all continents, well, not in Africa. Uh, uh, but if we would have to deliver everyone to Boston, for example, it would be extremely expensive and difficult. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we always we go, yeah, okay, okay, we'll do it online, but try to get a good line, good connection and everything. Try not to have a rubbish bin just behind you when, when we're shooting a live webinar. <laughs> it happened. It happened with a big name, believe me. 
Uh, no, I've I've seen it. I've seen it a few. T- <laughs> I've seen it a few times, um, and I, I, I've been there and and seen you going. You have to fix that in the background. Um, it's crazy, and I know you've got funny stories. Uh, again, I'll not name any names, but you know, there's certain people who don't want to come on camera <laughs> on a yeah, webinar. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, as you mentioned, we, we've done you know, all together, I don't know, like 400 webinars or something. And there were absolutely, or maybe I thought it was everything, but something new is coming. Yeah, for example, I have a big name, and it was actually not a real webinar, it was a kind of online conference, but timing is much, much more important. So a guy had. 25 minutes to to present, and it took him seven minutes to share the screen. Yeah, so so just just complete disaster. We manage, we manage, we put something else. We try, and but uh, it was just 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 complete disaster. After that, and every single test, I ask people to share a screen a few times, so uh, so they know how to do it. And yeah, I've seen you. You had the same. You had uh, one guest. I won't tell the name, and he didn't switch his camera on. I had the same with a very, very big name. I don't want to say. And he said, "Oh, you know, you know what? Uh, I'm a hotel, and connection is not good here." Yeah, many, many, many funny things. Or, yeah. Or not so funny at that time for me. <laughs> yeah, you you obviously um, get quite stressed as I was stressed the the particular webinar that I'd done with a person who wouldn't come on camera he was also 15 minutes late um, <laughs> and there is and there is nothing worse than organizing a webinar getting everyone to subscribe and then people let you down or make you feel like they're going to not turn up and obviously that's why I hundred percent get it um when you're saying be there 15 minutes beforehand um and if you're not there 15 minutes beforehand your phone and your facebook and everything starts um asking messages so i know you get quite um yeah but stressed. it's it's, it's, ex- it's extremely stressful it's extremely stressful you're sitting here in a webinar room nobody nobody here and you think what are you gonna do in 10 minutes time <laughs> and, and it's, it's not podcast it's not something you can, you can put in a store okay I'll do it tomorrow it's a live and especially when, when you do well, some we, we had uh, I think uh, our, my personal record was uh, we have 1031 people live at the same time it was with Larry Kim once uh, well 1000 people wait down no, 1000 not every day but hundreds 100 people waiting and you don't have a speaker well this is a complete disaster yeah it's a uh, yeah it's not fun not fun at all has there ever been a, a time where the speaker hasn't turned up well um i have one speaker uh in traffic jam and he called me and said he's a traffic jam and he it's never been traffic jam on this road and and i had to cancel a webinar jeez i know <laughs> i know that um, i know that i've had a few issues along the way with webinars where i've been cut off um halfway through a webinar and um, because of a shit hotel internet connection um, and a few other various bits and bobs that i've done um, like the one with David Ivanov, where I spoke for the first three minutes, just chatting garbage to David. I didn't realise we were live on air, um, and things like that. But yeah, well, it was, the... was not too bad because people in the live chat started really making jokes uh, about you. So, so it was kind of fun. Yeah. yeah, but what is the funniest thing that you've seen happen on a webinar? Yeah, just, just, yeah. You know, I have to really think about finance. Can't just remember. I, th- I think uh, maybe the same webinar with with David uh, when you your connection was just completely broke. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, funniest, funniest thing. Yeah, uh, we have Julie Joyce, and uh, she was uh, uh, she was doing a long, long. Uh, she's still doing a long series or on a link building, and actually, uh, she even I told her many times to mute YouTube link, because obviously you're doing it on different software, but you still can watch it on YouTube. And there is difference in time, about 10 seconds, uh, between what's in the webinar room and oh, 10 or 15 seconds, and what's on, on, on uh, YouTube. So what did she do? Uh, she had uh, amplifier, not, not um, uh, headphones, 
which is a bad idea. Uh, so she had her amplifier and she had a microphone. So what did she do? She forgot to switch off uh, YouTube uh, link. So she said, hello. So 10 seconds later from YouTube on amplifier, Julie Joyce, hello. So microphone picking it up and says in the webinar room, hello. Uh, so 10 seconds later, she says again, hello. Uh, so as, as a loop, as this loop will never, never obviously stop. And she doesn't know what to do. That was very funny. And it, it goes for three minutes or so. And nobody really knows what, what to do about that. I tried to type her to mute her YouTube. So she eventually mute her, oh, she killed her YouTube and it stops. Otherwise, uh, it wasn't very funny for her, I have to say. Yeah, no, I can imagine that must be a bit. I've actually done that myself before where I've been on a, a webinar and I wasn't aware of the YouTube thing and uh, I could hear myself talking back and it kind of throws you off when you can start to hear yourself while you're trying to talk. It's very off-putting and uh, quite stressful when you're live on camera. You're like, what the hell? But, um, yeah, it's uh, all part of the fun and games. It's been a massive... Yeah, but this is a part of a life's things. Obviously, you will polish. For, so, for example, uh, during this podcast, we already had a software crashed once, but you probably will cut everything out, and it will be for someone who doesn't know. It will be all fine, kind of reasonably polished. A life stuff, you cannot do anything. Life is life. If if someone has... yeah, some Okay, I, I had another funny story. Uh, uh, so I had... Uh, I think I had uh, Nick Wilsden, Cindy Kram, and Google's Andrei Lipansev. So, and Andrei uh, is a very serious guy he, yeah, for Google. So, basically, he was preparing his uh, sp uh, presentation and everything. So, he switched off his phones, uh, Slack, whatever you can reach him. So, so he's doing the presentation. And on the very first, first seconds, he was disconnected for some reason. So he was disconnected, but he did not know that he was on a full screen mode. He moved through his slides. I tried to call him. I tried to message him. I tried to do everything, but he didn't reply because he switched off everything off because he is a serious man. So uh, uh, what we're doing is all, all live. So Cindy Kram and Nick Wilson, so they're there as a panel, but uh, speaker disappear. Okay, so they're, just, they're, they're professionals. They're great people. They just, just start, start talking. So they were talking for... Uh, 15 minutes, so 15 minutes, quarter for now. So, uh, and Andre finished his presentation and uh, his, uh, he switched his phone on. He, he and he saw I was uh, calling him like 10,000 times. And he said, what, what happened? I said, you were disconnected. So all you were talking to your own screen. So uh, yeah, it was it was fun, but he 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 managed to join and very last because it was uh, not webinar, it was a conference again, so it was very timing, it was very short. So he managed to join in the last five minutes to apologize. It wasn't his fault, but it was funny. Yeah, there's always funny stories. That's what I like about uh, webinars and stuff. You always can have a laugh with it as well if people. Slip yeah, up but or... if, you don't, if you don't laugh, there is no humor. It's a dead webinar because uh, you, you can learn a lot. But if, if it's fun, it's you can it's much easier and everything. It's why we introduce different different form of webinar. Go away from this old old style what we call a boring boring webinar when someone come in with a presentation 45 minutes go through the slides so the slides so the slides so the slides, so the slides. everybody everybody is asleep in a half an hour yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah you can see the people dropping off even sometimes when we do webinars now if the subject's not important or, or or you know interesting sometimes you see the people dropping off um but you know, in terms of uh, going forward with same rush, you know, if if other people are looking to get involved with webinars and stuff like that, what what would be your advice? You know, what are you guys? You know, if if I've got someone saying, "How do I get on a same rush webinar?" Is it a case of just reaching out to you guys saying, "I want to work with you," or do yeah, you yeah. look for people? How does it work? I think it works uh, more or less the same in the whole industry. Uh, if you want the same is if I want someone on my webinar, I think the easiest way would be uh, go through the someone recommendation. So if someone who I know who I work with like 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 
Craig Campbell, for example, or, or many, many, many others, uh, will uh, be Rob Miller and says, oh, I have, I don't know, this guy and all oh, this girl, and she or he are expert in that, so that, that, and that, and that. And I recommend, I think they are good. Yeah, uh, yeah this is, would be the easiest way uh, to do that. Uh, another way to do it is much more, much more difficult and hard. For example, our blog, SMRAJ blog, works as a uh, self-submitted. So you can actually submit, can submit your post. Well, you submit your post doesn't mean it will be published, but you can submit your post. You submit your post. After that, it goes through our Alex and Melissa, which is not easy, believe me, you know that. It's not easy to pass them. Uh, if your stuff is good or could be good eventually and it's published, for me, it's a green, green card. So you, you're good. You're good. You're published. Uh, and you can be uh, for webinar. Why blog is easier in a way? Because it's not live. Obviously, the uh, editor can can uh, have a time. They can read what, your stuff. They can see you, you're good, you're not good, and everything. With a live webinar, it's much more difficult. Like it's difficult for me to put someone I, I never heard uh, talking uh, and and everything just on a live webinar as a speaker and see if he's he's what. Not very good, put it this way. So blog would be would be another way to get them to webinar system or recommendation. Interesting. So out with the webinar thing and everything else, I think something that you've got that, that I find is really strong and good value is your connection with all of the right people. Um, how How did you do that? How did that build up? Because obviously if you want for example, Bill Slawaski on there or Larry Kim on there, you can quite easily make that happen. How, how did that all happen? Well, did... it's, not, it's not, not, not that that easy sometimes because uh, some funny things. I, I wrote to Bill Slavsky once, I think it was in Hangal's Messenger, and it was and he didn't switch it off, and it was 5 a.m. Uh, at a place where, and so I woke him up, and he was very, very upset. So sometimes you do upset people. I also uh, remember upsetting Larry Kim with one image, uh, and he actually banned me on uh, Facebook for a year. But now we are all friends, of course. Well, uh, how sh how to make friends? Uh, my my rule is very simple. I try to treat everyone the way I I want to be treated. Yeah, I think uh, that. I mean, as I say, I think that's where you one of your strengths is. You 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 do seem to make friends. Um, in a lot of places and obviously uh, you went to Amsterdam last week as well or the week before um, and you're out there networking and, and making friends in person because for many years you were the guy that no one had ever actually met so we, we everyone had done tons of webinars with you but hadn't physically actually met you as a person so how are you enjoying the going out to different events now as well yes it's a very different experience and very new i only start doing this this year so i see uh, thought the value of sending me to this kind of events so i met so many people I already met and sometimes uh, sometimes you see okay you because you don't see how tall someone or how short or how big or so and you you meet someone and you, you don't even understand and you you don't even recognize a person well you do recognize but it's completely different uh, uh, feeling, yes, it it really helps. Obviously, uh, one personal talk, one one beer with someone, or one coffee with someone, it's like um, I don't know, five webinars. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's it's much more. Um, it's it, I enjoy like I can do better webinars with Ross Tavendale, for example, because we are friends and we've had beers. And we know how each other works and you can make jokes um, where sometimes if you've not met the person, you cannot, you know, be 100% comfortable. So I think it's always good to network and meet the people face to face. And I think, again, it just adds value to the webinar. It's a bit more relaxed and uh, everything like that. Has there ever been a person that you've done a webinar with and then you've met them in real life and you've felt like oh you know you're completely different to to what you've seen on a webinar well yeah I, I, as i mentioned uh, appearance yes because you don't see how tall or how uh, 
uh, uh, how small, how big. Uh, in terms of, uh, for example, you've done webinar and you think, oh, the person is great. You you you, you meet him or her and oh, no, this person is shit. No, that that never really happened. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, I say I was curious to know if you met someone that was a. Uh, yeah, you thought yeah, thought was really funny or something, and then you met them in real life, and they were like really quiet or something like that. Um, but no, I think that's why so was it because most of the people, uh, okay, it's, it's most of the people kind of uh, not not camera shy, but on the camera they much more uh, mm, or less talkative, or less than, or if you're not talking about Jason Bernard, of course, uh, he, he can do he can do it for Olympics on camera without camera anyway. Uh, but otherwise, most of the people on the camera they slightly. Um, less animated so in the real life especially after a couple of beers so it, so no no i've ne- never met anyone who is who is absolutely animated on a, a webinar and very 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 quiet uh sitting in the corner uh in in, in the real life no never happened but maybe one day maybe one day i'm sure there's a a, a few guys out there that you've still to come across that uh, are going to be either really quiet in a webinar and absolutely crazy um, in real life or vice versa. Yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this is possible because a lot of people when they see camera and when they realize it's all life, they became like a bit tense. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's, it's obviously it changes. No, but by the way, talk, talking about funny things, I had uh, on my webinar people drinking beer for example, and uh, it, was, it wasn't pre-agreed. Uh, one person, I can't tell the name, but she came for uh, for the conference with a bottle of beer, and because it was it was U- from UK, and she said, "Oh, in UK, it's a, it's a I think it was Friday night." She said, "It's already Friday night. That's why I'm drinking beer and doing a presentation." I also have people drinking beer from coffee, uh, a coffee max. Uh, I knew they're drinking beer because they told me, and they, they find it kind of funny. So they're drinking beer, but it's, it looked like a coffee. What, was that actually on Sam Rush though, or was that previous uh, on the web promo? Uh, okay, the first one with a bottle of beer, I was on a web promo, but I did have people drinking beer on a Sam Rush webinar from Coffee Max, and uh, they were kind of they told me it in the messenger. I'm drinking beer now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. I also remember a funny story. Um, and I'm going to actually name this person because it was very funny and I'm sure they don't mind, but we had uh, one of Joel Bondarowski's first ever webinars and he, he was sitting there with a shirt on and he, his hair all fixed and all that kind of stuff. And then I think you said to him, can you move like your kids' toys in the background or something? And he stood up and he had a pair of boxers, <laughs> he had a pair of boxer shorts on with his shirt. So I think... When, you, when when you're doing webinars, you, and you only see the top half a person, you really don't know um, what else is going on underneath or roundabout. Um, it's crazy. But the one, the one, <laughs> the one with Joel in his boxer shorts was really funny. Yeah, it uh, was funny. It was funny because it was absolutely unexpected. Because I don't think it was a hot period of time he, where we are, but he is in Tel Aviv, so it's, it's always hot there. <laughs> yeah, always hot in Tel Aviv. Yeah. But it's just funny the fact that he was sitting there with a shirt on, um, as if he was all business like. Um, but yeah, I found that one very funny. But I've had I've had a few funny experiences on webinars, um, in the past. Um, I've also had people, um, texting me, WhatsApping me, Facebooking me while I'm on a webinar trying to di- di- uh, disturb me as well. So. I would always say to people, make sure that if you've got a MacBook or something with your emails and, and Facebook and everything's all connected, just make sure that you close that stuff down because I've got a lot of friends like Andy Drinkwater um, who like to start ringing your phone and stuff while you're live in a webinar to to put you off because um, they just want to see a, a funny reaction online which is a uh, never it's, good it's, it's, it's very it's very good idea but as i mentioned uh, you with that google uh, webinar uh, sometimes you you do need some hard, some maybe secret channel of communication to tell hey 
uh, mate, you are, you cut off, so you're talking to your screen. Nobody can see you. Yeah. Um, so another thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the webinar software. Obviously, in the past couple of months, Google Hangouts has died, and that's the platform that we have all used for many years now. Um, how are you finding the crowdcast and, and everything else? What what was the change like? Was that stressful? It is, it is still stressful. It still takes so much. It, it is so much pain. Uh, we are talking so for some other company. We're, we're talking even with Vimeo to completely change it. Uh, but uh, the problem is all the software. I, I thought Hangouts is horrible software, but now when it's dead, I think it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, software. YouTube, please get it back. This is kind of a very strange thing. YouTube replaced or stopped supporting Hangouts, and they offer something which is completely different, which cannot be used the same way. So, for example, webcam, what they, they offer, it's only basically for one person. You can't even share a screen. So it's for kind of bloggers who, I don't know, show you how telephone works or this kind of things for, for live stream. So uh, we use uh, now Crowdcast and Big Market, and none of them, not I'm not saying they're bad software. They're not designed for us. We are a big company. We have everything done. Our registration system, our admin system, everything. We just need a streamer. And we still want to stay on the YouTube because YouTube is YouTube. YouTube is a uh, uh, very, very, very big source of, of everything for, for us. So we do want to stream it on YouTube. So we basically need a streamer. And most of uh, uh, this uh, webinar software, they offer you absolutely everything uh, from registration to pools. We don't need it. We already have everything. It's homemade, but we do have plenty of developers. So for us, it's a really, really big, big issue. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh... It is. I found it painful. I hate Crowdcast. I just love. I love Google Hangouts, as you say. Um, didn't really appreciate it at the I time. Think, I think. We, I think we found something. I'll show you. I'll show you one. I can't uh, say the name now because we have moved. So I don't want to say. Oh, this is a good one because we have done it yet. But maybe in a in a month, maybe we all will be with a stream yard. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, and one <laughs> final one final thing that I want to discuss with you is obviously being on a webinar, having the right lights and all that kind of stuff is really important. But what's even more important is getting people onto the webinar to watch. What is your advice to people who want to start their own webinar, for example? What are the key components into getting people onto a webinar? Yeah, okay. I, I, I won't go uh, and talk about uh, everybody. Yeah, get some stuff people want to hear and everything. Yeah, this is obvious. Uh, uh, what you have to have uh, if you're going to do webinars, uh, you have to make sure your mailing list is solid. So you have a really good or big list. Uh, if you don't, probably you shouldn't. But saying so you, you can't get list because you, do, you don't have webinars you don't have webinars because you don't have list uh, it, it, it's cash uh, 22 but uh if you don't have a mailing list but you still want to go for webinar uh you would need to put some money in promotion paid promotion works not as good because uh we find out that uh for example our average attendance rate about 35 percent so uh, i mean uh, almost uh, almost a third of people who registered will attend which is i think very high but if we split it and if you look at people who we bring by paid uh, uh promotion it's usually facebook paid social uh rate is about half of it so you bring in new people, which is great. It's, it's a great uh, lead generation too, with some money involved, obviously. But these people tend not to take it that serious, not to go uh, and, and attend, or much less, because they don't know webinars good. They just, 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 just uh, register. But okay, you register, it's on your mailing list. Next time you can email these people. So uh, for everyone who thinks uh, they can just, just start webinar tomorrow, it takes basically no money because it's, it's all cheap. Uh, and you sit down and start doing webinars, uh, think again, because if you don't have uh, people attending this webinar, why are you doing it? But in order to get attended people, you have to have a big, solid mailing list or spend money on, on an advertisement. So 
that's something that obviously I'm guessing that Sam Rush have a massive mailing list, but Sam Rush are also doing a lot of paid promotion behind a lot of the stuff. Um, yes, we we do both. Yes. Um, so what you know, I, what is the best though? I take it still email marketing because a lot of people say email marketing's dead. Um, I know that it's not because I've got a mailing list and. You know, I know it works very well, but for the general public, they're always going to say, nah, I've paid Facebook's better. I still would always say the mailing list gets the biggest um, traction yeah, it's, for it's, it's, it's all, all depends on your mailing list. Obviously, if you treat your mailing list uh, well, so it works fantastic. So I don't know, Larry Kim is, is brilliant. He, he probably sent too many emails from my point of view, but it works for him. So uh, uh, some, some people, uh, they think, uh, obviously, email marketing is a science, and I'm not a scientist. Uh, so, but some people, they uh, are saying, that, oh, you have to do it like very regularly, and I agree with them. Some people say, no, 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 we have to do it from time to time. I don't agree, because people tend to forget about you, and when you send email in three months' time, they think it's, it's a spam. Uh, email is still the main uh, source for registration for for things like webinars or online conferences. So you, if you're doing a webinar, if you want to succeed with a webinar, you, sooner or later you will have to have a solid mail list. It's, 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 it's no question about that. Yeah, no, I'd 100% agree with that. Solid mailing list is still working effectively for me, and I probably send one or two emails a week. That's it. I don't over spam people or irritate them I think just getting the balance right just so that you're not getting drop-offs all the time is important um, and as I say it's worked well for me um, and hopefully the podcast and everything else will continue to build my mailing list so um, that's the plan to keep growing that side of things. Uh, with, with the podcast it's, it's, it's a big question because for example your podcast in order to listen to your podcast as I understood I don't have to register do I? No. Yeah, um, so see, uh, this is this is a point actually. Uh, I, I understand you expect it. Okay, people uh, listen to your podcast after that they read to your blog, which they don't have to register. After they say uh, you would push up or something, say oh yeah, you want a news uh, register for yeah uh, for subs- subscribe for my uh, newsletter. Some people will will do that, but obviously it's slightly different a webinar because it's live. Not because we really want your lead. Yeah, we do want your lead as well. But uh, because it's live, people are registered because to get notification, uh, to get a reminder, because otherwise people will forget. It's live. They have to listen in particular, particular time. Uh, so uh, they registered, and that's how list is, is growing, actually. With a podcast, it's kind of secondary thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you make a very valid point. The reason I've not forced anyone to sign up at the moment is because it's new and no one knows the quality of the um, episodes and stuff like that. But eventually I will um, try and flip that so that I can continue to grow my mailing list and make sure that people yeah, are... Yeah, sure, sure. You can, you can put that people have, have to leave their email in order to get to get it to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the plan with the podcast. But as I say, just for now, I just wanted to release 15, 20 episodes just to give people a flavour of what it's all about. And then I will hopefully be able to get people to offer value to me because there's always got to be value to to me at the end of the day. And whether that's an email list or whatever it may be, then, of course, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but... That is pretty much us out of time for today, Anton. Um, but thank you very much for coming on and explaining what you guys look for in a webinar and obviously your background insights into webinars as well and some of the problems that you encounter. I think that will help people going forward if they want to get involved in webinars. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. Always a pleasure. <laughs>